Hey, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve, and we're talking about Final Cut Pro and a very, very useful plugin that you used for um, something you shot recently. Right, um, as you know, we do a lot of production for our tutorials, and I recently entered this video contest from uh, Otherworld Computing. And I won't go into the contest details other than the fact that it inspired me to make this little commercial. Yes. And um, I'm not gonna show you the whole commercial. Uh, if you wanna see it, so there's a link at the bottom here, just go check it out. But uh, the basic story elements here, I'll go into, into the timeline, is that you have this kid who, uh, who basically wants to go downhill and impress the girl next door, and he wants to take this little soapbox racer that he built and then do this downhill slalom course and record it with all these GoPro cameras he has set up along the way. Along the way. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately he, <laughs> well, he has some frustration in his edit system, okay, <laughs> that only OWC that like can he, solve. Yeah, that looks like me at the computer most of the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so need, suffice it to say, he solves his dilemma and by the time we get to the end, you know, he's able to show his video creation to the girl next door, right? Fabulous. Now, here it is, uh, over the shoulder shot. Obviously, it's an iPad, but that's not what no. we want to see. They want to look at the footage from his camera. Yes. This is where um, TrackX comes in. Okay, Cormel to Cor TrackX. Cormel. This is, people ought to ask me, what, what plugins do you, do you get? This is one that you have to have in your toolbox. Yeah, it, it's, it's really just, useful. SliceX and TrackX, they're sort of in the same product and they do a little bit different yeah. things, but they both involve tracking. Tracking, and it's using the award-winning Mocha technology. Yes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna park my playhead over the clip and I'm gonna press X to mark a range. And I'm gonna go into the browser, actually not the browser, I'm gonna go into the generators browser because that's where this is. You'll see it as C2 Track X. Mm -hmm. And there's three different types of trackers. The one that I wanna use is this track layer. So I'm gonna select it and press Q. So now I have it over there, and I'm gonna go ahead and close the browser for some screen real estate. And what's nice about CoreMelt's plugins is they, they, they try to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And here they're, they're saying, all right, you gotta create a shape, you wanna track some. So it kind of walks you through what, walks what to do you next. Through. You have a toolbar over here with an arrow and you have some different shapes. So it's telling me that you gotta, I gotta create a shape for tracking and tracking the motion. So I wanna create a shape that essentially matches the borders of this iPad frame. So the best tool for that, I think, is the polygon tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna just click up here in the corner. And it's got these nice little controls. Let's click here and click here. Click one up here. And we're gonna go ahead and close the mask code right there. Done, pretty, pretty good. Now, if it's not perfect, you can just, you have these control points, these handles, you can drag on them and you can readjust the mask. You can rotate, I'm not gonna do any of that, but I mean, you have full control over the mask. Okay. All right. It's now, not really a mask, is it so, so much as a set of points it, that'll be tracking Yeah, points. it's, I'm sorry, it's, it's a set of points that you're tracking. Okay. Right, so in this case, it's looking at the, you know, the edges of the pixel where the white meets the black edges, so. Got it, so, all corners. Right, now I can track forward or backward using these two arrows on this menu bar here. So, um, you know what, I'll just move it to the beginning here and track forward. And the speed of which, uh, the speed of the track is largely dependent on your processor. Mm. So, the longer the track, the faster machine is gonna go faster, okay? So, it's tracking and you can see, now if I skim over this, you can see that that- It moves, it moves. points move it. Yeah. Right, it's pretty good. Now. The next thing is I want to put content in there. Sure. Right, because he's holding it and he's moving a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is click this little surface button and immediately you'll, it'll, it'll put in like kind of a placeholder image. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, that's what it's gonna look like. Um, but I wanna use an actual video clip. And the clip that I want is over here in this nice keyword collection I've created. And what I've done is I've created a uh, a fast version of his helmet cam. So this is this is his helmet cam sped up. Point of view from his helmet. Yeah, point of view yeah. from his, and I want that to be inside. Showing on the iPad. Showing on the iPad. So what I wanna do is select the track layer clip and then open the inspector. So what I'm gonna do, and you'll notice there is a drop well here. So uh -huh. you just you know, click the drop well, and like most things in Final Cut, you just kinda skim over. Okay, I wanna, I want it to start right about there. So click, and I'll just choose apply clip, boom. Now, let's see how this looks. If I play this, let's see how it looks so far. Not bad, 
Not bad. I mean, it's 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 definitely tracking with it, but I can, uh-huh. but I can make some adjustments. Okay, one of the adjustments I might want to make is I can see a little bit of the edge here. So you have these control points here. You could zoom in to make it a little easier to look. Oh, you right. can. Oh yeah, you can zoom in. So let's go ahead and let's see. Let's go into seventy-five percent, and now you can really really see the edges of the mask here. So just grab that. See, you can just grab this and just try to, you know, it's really just about getting it finagled to the point where you want it. And as you do that, that'll set new keyframes on that particular frame, right? If you need to tweak it a little bit. Actually, what it's, it's all I'm ju- all I'm doing right now is adjusting the cutout. Oh, okay. That's all I'm doing. I'm okay. not even keyframing anything. It's it's automatically kind of tracking it. Yes. Now you could go further and add a mask, but it's it's really unnecessary because all I've just done is just cut it out. Yeah, your your tracking points are the same as the area that you want to mask, which which isn't always the case. Which isn't always the case. But here it is. Which is why there's a third option for actually making a mask. Got it. And so in this case, I'm just, I'm almost done. There's some other controls here. Um, for example, if I feel like this has been squished or whatever, I can go over here in the inspector to surface scale X, and I can, you know, I can stretch it out a little bit. Uh-huh. You know, I can I change the aspect ratio a little bit. Just little things in here to, to just kind of tweak the image to my liking, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can invert them out. There are all kinds of controls, but it really, my feeling with these plugins is get it, use this as simple amount of controls as possible, right? Get it, get it close, and uh, and a lot of times the 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 effect will completely be sold by just a by couple, yep. just by those couple yep. of things. So what I'm going to do is back up here, and that that looks pretty good, you know, um, I'll, for only spending a couple minutes on it. Yep. And she's very Fantastic. impressed, yes. Yeah, and it's, it does have, like you mentioned, it has a deep tool set, so you can, you've can you got a lot of flexibility on tweaking and adjusting your track. But often at the gate, if you set things up well, you've got a great track and it just took a couple minutes. And something you uh, really can't do in Final Cut otherwise, you need to put it in some other app and uh, to do that kind of play. Right, I mean, yeah, you, it's, it, that's a really good point. You, you have very good mass tools now in Final Cut, but you can't track them. And that's why this is still a really, a, a useful tool in your toolkit. Excellent. See, that's great. Thank you. So hope you found that useful. Uh, Check out more information about Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Apple Motion, and many other products at rebeltraining.com. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook. We'll be back here next week with another (laughs) another episode of MacBreak Studio.